Welcome to Film in 5D. So about everything film in 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammock. This last week was Thanksgiving, so we decided to take the week off. So unfortunately there's not going to be an episode for this week. I'm just kidding guys, let's talk about lenses. Okay, so if you're just starting out with your first video DSLR, one of the questions you're probably asking yourself is which lens to buy. I asked myself this question a few months ago when I was planning on getting my first DSLR, the 5D. Did you look in the mirror while you did it? Yes, I looked, I looked at myself, took a good long look, which lens to buy. I actually intended for this topic to be one of our first episodes, but I felt that I needed a little bit more experience with some of the more popular lenses. I myself knew that I wanted to start out with a zoom lens for the versatility it would give me, especially on the photography side of things. But this is a question you should definitely ask yourself when deciding what your first lens should be, especially since you can get two to three good primes for the price of just one L-series zoom lens. Also, prime lenses are both sharper and faster than zoom lenses, and they also work very well in low light, which is why I'd recommend them if you're going to be shooting indoors. So once you've made this decision, the next thing you need to consider is which focal lengths will best suit your needs. To make this decision, you need to 1. Look at the size of your camera's sensor. Is it full frame, APS-C, or even smaller like the ones on the Panasonic DSLRs? And 2. What types of shots are you looking to capture? The most popular frame size you'll see is 50mm, but if you're using a crop frame sensor like the 7D, you're going to need to go with a 30-35mm to 35 millimeter lens to get the same effect. Therefore, the first lens that I'd recommend to anyone just starting out is a 50mm prime, or the equivalent for the size of your camera's sensor. Was that your first lens? No, it was not my first lens. It was my second lens. I got a zoom lens. But if you're going with a prime, I recommend the 50 millimeter or the equivalent. 30 to 35 years, you're shooting on a 70 or 60D for T2i. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually used the Canon 50 millimeter 1.4 prime lens. And I have to say, it was really a step up from the 1.8. And it's four times cheaper than the 1.2, which I hear isn't even as sharp anyways. Another thing to consider is the depth of field difference you get with different focal lengths. Here I'm just using my zoom lens. But you can see the difference in the depth of field between 35mm, 50mm, and 85mm. You can also see that the distance from the subject to background changes between different focal lengths. This is why a lens like the 85mm has a hairpin depth of field, which is just another thing for you to consider when purchasing your first lens. In fact, if you're going for the film look, you should never go below an f-stop of 5.6 on a full frame, or an f-stop of 4 on a crop frame sensor. Now this isn't to say that you should never experiment with lower f-stops, but if you're trying to recreate the film look, Definitely keep it above 5.6 or 4 on a crop frame sensor. Next, I'll show you some of these lenses in action after a public service announcement. Could you please stop that? He was with me on the day of the incident. Yeah. Thanks for helping us out, by the way. It's my job. Can I get you something to drink? Water. So you were with my client the day his car exploded, yes? Yeah, that's why we called you. What do you mean, we? Colton is my client. It was his car that sustained extensive damage. Extensive damage? It blew up and landed in my backyard. Right. You're not seriously accusing me of this, are you? I'm not accusing anybody of anything. Yet. Are you serious? Why would I blow up my best friend's car? I have $5,000 worth of property damage. I don't even know if my insurance company's gonna cover it. It's my job to ask the questions. We understand, don't we? Do you two have any idea who would want you dead? Well, I've thought about it for the past week and I can't really think of anyone. Are you serious? We both know it's Will. So quick to blame others. What? You asked us who we thought it was. Dude, are you... I'm done with this guy, man. He obviously doesn't know who he's dealing with. This is my job. You don't have to tell us every two seconds. I know exactly who I'm dealing with. I've seen the show. And quite frankly... <coughs> um, I think... 
think we're getting a bit off subject. Actually, I think I have everything I need. I'll be contacting you within the next couple of weeks. It's my job to do so. Okay, are you sure there's nothing else you need to know? No, that pretty much covers it. All right, well, let me walk you to the door. Thanks for coming by. No problem, it's my job. Thanks again. They're on to us. Go ahead with the plan. Alrighty, so the first lens we're going to take a look at is the 24-105mm f4 zoom lens that comes in the kit with the 5D. This is the cheapest L-series lens, especially when you buy it in the kit, and offers an f-stop of 4 throughout its 24-105mm to focal lengths. Here we can see our subject in a 24mm frame, a nice wide shot that would be excellent for landscape shooting. Here he is again at 50mm, and here he is at 105. As you can see, this lens has a very wide range making it more versatile in my opinion than other L-series zoom lenses from its class. I see a good amount of people recommending the 24-70mm to L-series lens, and while I don't actually own this lens, I have used it several times. While it is a faster lens, with an f-stop as low as 2.8, the thing that annoys me about it is the weight. It weighs almost twice as much as the 24-105mm to lens, and while this might not matter to you personally, it's definitely something to consider. Also, the limited range you get with this older lens can be seen in these images. Of course, if you plan on getting the 70 to 200 millimeter L-series lens, then this isn't going to matter to you much, since you'll have the 24 to 200 millimeter focal lengths covered anyways. But for me, as of right now, that is simply out of the question, since that lens costs well over $2,000. The final lens that I'll talk about on this episode is the 16 to 35 millimeter L-series, which is actually the next zoom lens that I plan to buy. While I wouldn't recommend this as a starter lens, mostly because of its price tag and limited range, it's definitely good for landscape shooting. It wouldn't be nice if you could just afford all the lenses. Yeah. Some people do, dude. It's crazy, man. A lens is an investment. Like, I don't understand like how they have 50 lenses. I don't care. The photographers have like four cameras and like they don't even oh, bother yeah. to change lenses. They're just like... Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, those, that's crazy. Dude, that's, it's like ridiculous, man. Go check out Devin's channel, which is featured on the show's page. He shoots with this very lens, and I think it's a good example of how this lens could and should be used. Now unlike the 24 to 105 mm these last two lenses stop down to 2.8, which essentially means that you can get away with using them indoors. However, in my opinion, this isn't worth the extra money, especially if you plan on getting a prime lens anyway. Dude, you sound like a prime lens fanboy. I am. They're awesome. Ultimately, the lens you choose is going to depend on your budget, and what kind of shots you're looking to get. But that's it for this week. Send me your questions via at mentions on twitter.com forward slash Aaron Hammock. Follow the show's Twitter at filmin 5 d Like our Facebook page at this link here. We'll be back next week to talk about bubblegum and lollipops. Is that really what we're going to talk about? Yeah, I'm not. <sighs> I just think it sounds stupid. <laughs> stupid? Dude, you're stupid. Bubblegum and lollipops? <laughs> if you think that's stupid, then we're done here. We're just done. We're done. <laughs> well, it's hard because I'm not actually sitting there across from you. <laughs>